Here is the result of the pulse based test part 1 between Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro versus Adidas Adazero Prime X Strung. The test was carried out at 12 km per hour and has been repeated over several days at different times of the day. Afterwards, I calculated the average heart rate. Later, there will be one with 14 and 16 km per hour. I won't say much more in this video. It didn't go so well in the last one. But for those who don't know how I perform my test, you can see it at the end of the video as always. Here is the result. I'm back with my heart rate based running test. Hopefully there will be many more because I feel that it is in this area that I can offer the most here on YouTube. I don't have the same skills as the other shoe YouTubers. But I have a huge passion for this. And constantly trying to develop my test method. So it is as accurate as possible. Without getting too geeky. I've had to change some of the speeds in the new tests I'm doing simply because my form hasn't been good enough and I couldn't run with a stable heart rate which is a very important factor for my tests to be reliable. When you work with the pulse, there are so many factors that play a role, and one of the hardest things is to repeat the test and get exactly the same result, which I am very keen to achieve. It's so easy to just run once and say here's the result. It is far more difficult to repeat the test several times and get the same result or very very close to the same. Here is an example of why it is really important to do the tests right after each other. I'm in the process of doing another test between Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro versus Adidas Prime X Strung. Very important to mention that I have not repeated the test enough times. To be able to say this is the final result. Try to see there is a huge difference in my heart rate. Some will probably think, is Adidas Prime X really that much better? That cannot be true. And they are absolutely right about that. Try to see what happens when you do the tests right after each other on the same day. My data match perfectly, there is one pulse beat difference both days. Here it is equally important to mention that you cannot always get that close. But I have the same approach to this as when I was training to be the best Ironman as possible. I leave nothing to chance. I also just have to mention in this context that 10 pulse beats is not normal from day to day. But I hadn't slept very much the day my heart rate was high. Which plays a huge role on one's heart rate. Plus many other things. When I have repeated the test many times, I calculate the average. Basically, it also doesn't matter what my heart rate is, what's interesting in these tests is the difference. And there is a lot of work involved in making such tests. I'd rather spend 20 hours doing a test which I know I can vouch for, than spend an hour and know I haven't done my best to get the most correct result. Instead of me telling more about how I do these tests, have I chosen to put some of my old tests at the end of the video? Where I explain it. Now for this test between Adidas Adazero Adios Pro 2 vs Scott Speed Carbon RC. There are probably some who are thinking why I am doing a test of such old shoes. I almost just bought a pair of Scott Speed Carbon RC. Got them for 50 euros. Thought it might be fun to try and test them against some other shoes for the same year 2021. I have chosen to complete this test at 15 km per hour and not at three different speeds, which I usually do. I explain later in the video why. Before you get the result. Here's what Scott says about the Speed Carbon RC. Let me just be honest, I absolutely do not share the same opinion. Our fastest road racing shoe to date. Building on 10 years of innovative R&D, we created our most lightweight and efficient carbon-plated road racing shoe built for you, to run faster for longer. Energy return. A unique dynamically flexible carbon fiber plate. Integrated between our midsole, we have added a carbon plate that dynamically increases stiffness as you increase speed and retains flexibility when walking. In short, it gives you more power and efficiency when you need it and ease of movement when you don't. Running efficiency. Evolved Rocker 2, our most efficient running platform. ER2 applies our advanced understanding of biomechanical principles to promote a more dynamic running position, reducing heel strike impacts and increasing running efficiency. Simply put, you can run faster, for longer, with less energy. Lightweight. Our lightest and most responsive foam. 
enhancing the properties of our existing high rebound foam, this new lightweight foam has even more rebound in an even lighter package. Soft, light and responsive, but with the levels of durability of a long-lasting EVA. Additionally, the lightweight mesh upper completes the package so you can speed up on your runs. I think most people know the Adidas Pro 2. So I won't say much about them, other than they weigh 252 grams 8.9 ounces in the same size. And that I have to admit that I forgot my test pair of them. When I started this test. In fact, that probably says a lot about how much of a geek I am in this area. I pretty much have an extra pair of all my shoes that I only use for testing. So just to mention it. The shoes you see in the video have run 200 kilometers before the test. One of the advantages of having an extra pair is that I can compare them and know when they lose their effectiveness. Here is the result. This is the biggest difference I have measured between carbon shoes, and especially when you consider the speed. Try to see the result for this test, I know it is 14 km per hour instead of 15. And if you wonder why my heart rate is so much lower in the other test, then it is a good example of why it is important not to compare old tests with new ones. Since the circumstances, the shape and all sorts of things have an influence on the pulse. You can also see here that it is only when you start to increase the speed that the difference really becomes apparent. There are two reasons for that. First reason based on my experiences. This is where you really feel how the shoes are different. And how much they give back. Plus another important thing my test results will probably be less reliable. Therefore, the new tests that I have already started will be performed at 12 km per hour, 14 km per hour and 16 km per hour. It's not because I can't run at 17 km per hour, but I just can't do it completely calmly and effortlessly, as it requires to get the correct results. But back to this test. In one area my test is completely useless, I admit that. In my test, I do not take into account how one's body feels after running, for example, 20 kilometers in the shoes. But I also don't think it can be done based on pure data, at least not with the equipment I have. Scott Speed Carbon RC is really terrible to run in. It is as hard as a rock. And I don't recognize what they say about the shoe at all. Before anyone comes after me, remember this is just my opinion. People who follow my channel know I have problems with my head and I'm extremely sensitive. My head told me many times. Stop running in these awful shoes. So it will be a very long time before they will be used again. It's the worst shoe for the price I've ever tried. When they came out they cost $190. Totally insane. Example. Adidas Pro 2 costs $225. When they came out. And it feels like a super shoe in every way. You definitely can't say that about the Scott Speed Carbon RC. It feels more like a super stone. It doesn't help me in any way. In the end, I'll just say these are my thoughts. There is probably someone who has a different opinion. Which is perfectly fair. But now you know why I only included 15 km per hour in this video. I simply did not want to spend more hours in these shoes. For me, running should be fun. And these shoes give me no joy. But there will be one more test of them at some point. Where I test them against a Nike Pegasus 40. Which is my standard preference shoe when it comes to testing. And for those who want to know more about how I do my test, there will be a video about it now. Here are the results for my heart rate based running test. I focus in this video on pure data. If you would like to know more about the shoes. Then there are some shoe YouTubers out there who are much better at talking about shoes than I am. I'm not that good at English. So that's why this annoying computer voice. I have been running for over 30 years. So I have some experience. And although my English is bad. You are always welcome to write to me. I will answer as best I can. People who know me are aware that I pay attention to the smallest details and especially regarding my training. I'll try not to get too geeky. But there are some things you need to know. I will only focus on the two most important things in my opinion in this video. I am in the process of making a large video where I go into the smallest detail about my running tests. I leave no stone unturned. So I simply need some more answers about running power. Before I can finish the video. I have tried to contact the dealer of Strid, Next Gen Running Power, where I live. But they have not been able to help me with my questions. So I've contacted Strid.com and I'm looking forward to their response. So I can finish my video. My tests have absolutely not 100% correct. But I try to get as close as I can. 
Feel free to ask questions about them. Then I will answer as best I can. I use a Techno Gym treadmill, which simulates running outside. It has almost no shock absorption. So the conditions are always the same. Plus two heart rate monitors so I know the data fits. Regardless of which test you do. You have to repeat it several times and I speak from pure experience. You need to make sure the data matches. Otherwise the test is completely useless in my world. Here is a small example of it. A few days ago I was out running on an outdoor track. Ran 1 km between pace 306 and 330. Repeated it 10 times. I ran in a pair of Adidas Takumi Sen 8. The plan was to do some watt-based tests. Here you can see why I think Garmin's running power is not useful. The other important thing is when you do heart rate-based tests you do them right after each other. Here you can also see an example of the pulse varying between days, but not very much between the shoes when they are made right after each other. As I have said many times, I pay attention to the smallest details, which has given me some challenges when I've seen other YouTubers doing tests. But from now on I just concentrate on my own test. My plan in the future is just upload the data from the tests. So those of you who want to know more about how I make them can always just watch the video where I go into details about my way of testing, which will hopefully soon be finished. That way I can spend my time doing what I think is fun and get more videos published. And you don't have to hear me repeating the same thing all the time. Now for the test. Here you can see how many times I have run to do this test. However, it is important to say that not all the data is usable. Because of the two heart rate monitors I use did not show the same. I could talk a lot about this topic. But think you are tired of listening to me. So here is the result. It is important to mention that the last test 18.5 km per hour was only performed once, so you should probably take the data with a grain of salt. I have done a lot of tests. But never before have I experienced that the result has been so close. I have now received the reply from Strid. My question to them was as follows. I have tried Garmin running power. However, without success. Their data is simply not reliable. In my tests, I can't tell the difference between a pair of Nike Pegasus versus a pair of Nike Vaporfly at 15 km per hour. The tests were carried out on a treadmill, so I know the speeds are exactly the same. My question to you is. With the new Strid Next Gen, can I see a difference between a pair of Pegasus versus a pair of Vaporfly at 15 km per hour? One must assume that Vaporfly has a lower wattage because it is more efficient. At least I can see a difference on my heart rate based test. This was their answer. We are unable to make an official claim that Strid data can help you make a determination on which shoe is best for you. I have great respect for their honesty, but it strikes me that it is not more accurate. You may be thinking how do I make sure that the speed I use for my tests is always the same. I do it like this. The speed my treadmill shows is sent directly into Zwift. I don't use my Garmin heart rate monitors for that. It is not reliable at all. For example, if you run in a pair of Primex and switching to a pair of Takumi Sen 8 and your cadence changes a little, will the speed also often change? At least that's my experience. Now you are probably thinking, is the treadmill he uses calibrated 100% correct and shows the correct speed? I can say that with certainty. It is not, but it always shows the same speed no matter what, which is the most important thing for my tests. I wouldn't be able to achieve that with a Strid or a Garmin heart rate belt, even though I know Strid is more reliable than Garmin, but just not enough for my tests. When it can't tell the difference between a pair of Pegasus versus a pair of Vaporfly, it is important to mention that Garmin and Strid are certainly good tools to use for most people, just not for my tests. 
I also just want to mention that the treadmill I use for my tests is very reliable and has a maximum speed of 25 km per hour, which means that it does not slow down when it gets hot at the speeds I do my tests at. I have experience that other treadmills can do that. If there is something I did not explain properly or you wonder about something, I answer all questions. I don't know everything. But I leave no stone unturned. And constantly trying to become wiser. I know my video is not very exciting to watch like other YouTubers. But the most important thing for me is to give you the most correct data.